Hello everyone and welcome. I wanted to do a very quick introduction to go through my thought process when I get a scrapbooking workshop kit from Close to My Heart. This is how the kits come. Everything that you need to create these three double page spreads is contained in one Ziploc bag. So let's open it up, have a quick look at it and I'll go through my process of how I break this apart to get my own design pages. You can see that there are instructions here, there are photos on the front when you open it up you get a cutting guide and then you get an assembly guide for the layouts so I skipped a page then so this is the left page for project one and the right page and then so on and so forth so that you end up with three double page spreads if you follow the scrapbooking guide exactly as it's intended but I always put a little tweak on these things myself so I thought it might be fun to actually film myself doing this and a little bit of the process I go through just before I get to doing the pages. I keep this guide handy because I do want to refer to it. And what I normally do when I take things out, I go through them and I ooh and ah over all the lovely products. This is a selection of elements from the full Cape Cod embellishment pack. We've got a little bit of the craft die cuts and the white die cuts and a couple of the acrylic shapes. It's not the whole entire pack. You would have seen me use those on a previous video where I did 11 layouts from one paper pack, sticker sheet and these embellishments. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. So there's the sticker sheet and you get all the papers that are contained within the Cape Cod collection. So I have flicked through these before but I just wanted to let you know this is what's contained in a scrapbook guide. If close to my heart you always get the full sticker sheet and all the papers within their scrapbook workshops. So I'm just going to put those aside and then show you what else is contained in this. I'm going to pull all of this out in one go now. You can see you get your photo holders. So if you don't have the photos ready, you can put these photo place holders on your layouts once you've made them up so that you can then put your photos on top. And sometimes I do this and then I crop my photos down just a little bit and then I use these as a white mat. There's specialty papers always included that you can't get any other way other than buying the scrapbook workshop. So for me, this is a bit of a hero, this paper. And I'll just flip through here till I find the other papers. This is the other pattern paper that you get with the kit. I love the wash on this. And the thing to notice that's a little bit different from our normal pattern papers are these are white on the back. They are not double sided. So there are three sheets of specialty papers. Then there is a selection of coordinating card stock. And sometimes I don't use what's in this packet. I might switch it out for something else. I might think I want to bring in maybe some toffee or some shortbread onto these layouts because I think that will work really well, especially with an Australian summer. But you could also bring in peach and you could also bring in Sundance and you could use the light side. And even though this is periwinkle, I think Glacier would work quite well too because that's quite a light wash on this. So there's always coordinating cardstock and you have exactly what you need to create those three double page spreads. The other cool thing that you get with these scrapbook workshop kits are die cuts. And when you turn these over, you can see that everything is labeled. So I know this whole entire sheet here would go to project three. And this is the matching page, once you push all of this out, that goes with this piece here. So if we look at the instructions, you can see once I push all of this out, the little white pieces, I'll just do one on camera for you so you can see. You can use these on other layouts because they're perfect letters. So there's no reason why you can't use it. But for this layout here, they've actually put these lagoon colored pieces. And I'm gonna take this out and you would hear those behind the die cut so you can see how that is constructed. And you will just run a little bit of liquid glue around the outside of that L there and then you can attach that over top. And these are labeled as well. So this is for project two. So while I'm taking these apart, I would have a pile for project two. Project three has this wood paper. So this is my project two, that would be one pile. This is project three, that would be another 
of Heil. So I'm just going to put Project 3 off to the side as well. This one is for Project 1. And then what I would do is turn this one over and start pushing these out to go with the relevant pages. So all I would do, and that you can see how easy these are to push out. So this one is project two, and then I would keep doing that. And then once all of this is done, I would then have this spread out on a larger table and I would stand back and have a look at it. I would then bring in the pattern papers that are needed. So in this case here, this has this as the pattern paper. I would punch out everything that I need and then I would stand back and have a little look and work out how I can stretch this further. When I'm looking at this page here, this is the first one I'm going to do on camera with you, but I'm going to strip it back a little bit so that I can make a feature of this paper and extend the life of this layout to get probably two layouts out of one piece here. So I'm going to go away, I'm going to sort all this out, I'm going to spread it out over my trestle table that I put up in my craft room, and then I'm going to come back and put this layout one together with my twist on it and then watch out for others in this series when I go to do project two and project three and at this stage I'm not quite sure how many layouts I'm going to get out of this one scrapbook workshop but I know that I'm going to get at least four double page spreads probably five double page spreads by the time I'm finished with it. So I've pulled out the pattern papers that I need for project one, as I showed you earlier with my sorting. And looking at this, there is a lot of this gorgeous paper that is covered up by the layout. So I'm going to gut out quite a section of this, but I want a large border. I don't want a small border on this. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have this running across ways. For me, that works better for sea type or beach type photos than having a pattern that's running vertically. So, and that's going to go like this. And then I've got a 10 by 10 inch piece of white daisy. And you can see in here, there is a large piece of the stripe pattern and a large piece of this word pattern. And I'm going to leave this, I think, mainly as a white background behind it because I've got this section here to put on. I'm going to keep the photo layout fairly similar for the left page. And then there's this zip strip that runs across as well. But I'm finding the color tones of this, I wanna bring in more of the blues. I'll just put the instructions over to the side here. What I think I'm going to do is bring in the blue instead of a large piece going over this, I think I might cut a border strip or a one and a quarter inch strip to run across. And then I'm gonna have a play with the zip strips to see if that's what I like. I've done exactly the same treatment to the right page. I'm gonna bring that in so I can get a visual of the whole thing going across. I've got my one and a quarter by 12 inch strips of the stripe. So I'm thinking, and that's gonna run across like this. And then I'll match that up on this side. And then when I bring in the zip strip, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that one or if I might replace it with this anchor zip strip that's off another piece of the pattern paper. That brings in more of the shortbread or the toffee from here and also from this section here. Or I could go with more blues and put the seashell and the starfish zip strip. And I think that's gonna be the color tone I like for this layout. So I'm just gonna put that over there, just so I can see, I'm gonna take these two away. And I sorted all the stickers out. Now I'm going to keep these main stickers on this layout here. So I'm thinking they've got this one on this side and here like this. And they've also got two four by six photos that go across this part. But I'm gonna change this up just a little bit and introduce another photo. So I might put this one as a portrait photo. I think it's always good to have different orientations because quite often we rotate our phones or our cameras when we're taking photos. And I'll bring in a four by four photo here and probably have this underneath. And what I've seen on the die cuts is there is another frame here that I could use. So I'm going to cut this out of the die cut piece 
and that's going to frame my four by four inch photo. And then I'm also thinking instead of having this here, I'm going to put a little photo holder in here and this is creating another photo opportunity, but I'm also bringing this stronger color of the blues, which is a bluebird, across to the right page as well. So I'm gonna quickly trim this down and I've just left a little bit of white going around the edge. And I think that by putting this over top of this photo here, that is going to finish off this photo. And by putting this one here, I've got two of these stronger blue elements here, the bluebird elements with the frame and in the title here, and also the blues over this side as well, the stronger blues. And that brings the eye across. So I'm quite liking how that's looking. I've got this little deck chair that I'm gonna use. So I think I'm gonna bump this photo up and then have this on the side. And I'm quite liking how this is looking. But what I'm gonna do before I put this three by three holder directly on top, I'm just gonna make sure that I don't wanna have this full piece here. And I'm thinking, yes, I'm gonna put the three by three over, but I'm not going to waste this piece. I'm gonna cut this out from the inside here so that I've got that for an embellishment or another page or even on this one if I want to tuck it around a photo. So I've got two pieces out of this one die cut and because this has a softer hue, I'm going to save it for another page and keep the stronger bluebird on this page. So now all I have to decide to do is what color I'm going to do my photo mats. So I've got some off cuts of some cardstock here. So I'm thinking I'm either going to use toffee I think I would use the light side for this. So I'm just going to put that on here to see if I like the look of that or if I'm going to use shortbread because that's a gorgeous soft colour. So I can have a little play to see which colour I like the best. This little stripe here is actually in toffee but I think the shortbread works quite well too. So it's just personal choice for me. Actually I'm going to put it over on this side where I've got more of this showing as well. This sticker here is pulling in all the toffee and the shortbread bread type colors. So the shortbread looks good for me. I'm going to put this piece of toffee under here and I think I'm going to use shortbread for that. So I'm going to go away and here all of this down. I'm going to trim my photo holders down just a quarter of an inch and my photo mats are going to be at true sizes because then I can get more out of one sheet of cardstock. And I'm going to adhere everything down and then I'll be back with all the finishing touches with the embellishments and putting the stickers on. I've got all the paper layers adhered and now it's time to put the stickers and everything on. What I wanted to show you with how I've done this one is I've left adhesive and I've only used dot roller very sparingly here so that I can put my photo under here when I'm ready to put that on. And I'm going to bring in the die cut pieces as well as the actual acrylic shapes that are here. And I'm going to follow this guide pretty much with what I'm going to use on the page. What I wanted to do on camera was push out this coral piece here. It is so gorgeous. These pieces are laser cut, so they're quite fine. And I just need to push out a couple of little bits that haven't come out, but they really do separate from the carrier sheets extremely well. So, and this one's going to come out from the side of my journal box. I think that works really well. On the original layout, there wasn't a photo in this placement here. And I also need to press out these palm leaves as well. So I'm just gonna press those out. And I'm going to put them where they suggest on the guide here because I quite like how these are looking. And then these ones I can save for another layout. So they have them coming out like this. Now my title is going to go over top of some of the photos. So I've done a little bit of cutting here into the carrier sheet so that I can place this on and not worry about putting my photos on later. Summer is coming eventually to Australia. We're sort of in the middle of winter right now. And I know I need to sort through some older photos as well, but I haven't quite got around to doing that. And I wanted to share with you these scrapbook layouts that I'm putting together from the workshop kit. So all I've left is this piece here. I've cut away the carrier sheet and this piece, the adhesive remains. And this is going over top of areas of these three photo mats, actually all four photo mats. In the instructions here, you can see that there's this sticker strip. And because I've changed the zip strip out, I'm just gonna peel this off 
what I would do is put that here, but it's too close to that one. So I'm actually going to get a bit of a twofer out of this one, I think. I'm just going to cut it and hope that what I'm going to do is going to work. I'm just going to stick this on my all-purpose mat for the moment. I think I want to have it coming out here and a little bit under the title. And they've also used the anchor. I'm just going to see if I like the color of that. That brings in the glacier and the lagoon on this side, but there's not too much glacier and lagoon on the other side. But there is glacier and lagoon within this pattern paper here. So I think that's going to be okay. I just need to lift this up a little bit because I'm going to tuck quite a bit of this under here. I've still got this little tab here. I'm still deciding if I do want to put that over here. I think that's going to work all right. So I'm going to commit to that. Lift this sticker back up again. I haven't pressed too hard. And just have that coming out of the side of that photo and onto this pattern paper behind here. And I've also got acrylic shapes to use on this page. Now, as I said earlier, this is a sampling of the full pack. If you love the look of all these, check it out in the catalog. I'll put a link below and you'll be able to see the items. Everything that I'm using today, I'll have a link in the description below. So I'm just going to place these around. I'm going to have one here. I'm following the guide a little bit. They've got this larger clamshell up here and a smaller one down here, so a little grouping of these. And then I've just got one of these starfish left. Maybe that's on another layout. I think what might be nice is to have all the acrylic shapes on this one layout. So I might just put that little starfish there. I think that looks quite cute. And there's also the geo tag that can go up here. And what I'm gonna do is do my journaling here. And because the geo tag is up here, I'm just gonna do some strip journaling of the where we were and the date. And once I've put all these little pieces on, my page is going to be done. I really love this Cape Cod paper. I just think it is a beautiful beach summer style paper. It is my favorite beach paper ever. I'm going to say that. I'm going to commit to that. I know we've had quite a few beach summer type papers, but this I think is absolutely beautiful. So if you have your eye on anything Cape Cod, I would get it now. I don't think this is going to last for the whole entire catalogue have a feeling it may sell out. I might be wrong. So if you have your eye on this, I will grab it now. So when you're looking at these shapes, make sure that all the pieces have come out before you go to stick it on. Oops. And then also make sure when you're looking at it that you're going to be adhering the right side down. So this has got a little bit of an etched design. This is all smooth. So I'm going to put the adhesive on this side. And now that I've turned it over, I think I've got another little piece stuck in here. There it goes. So and that opens up that little section. I love all the little intricate details on this. Now I don't want to put it over my photo or the glue over where my photo goes. So I've just got that off to the side a little bit. So now I've completed project one for me, which is based on this project one here. But you know that I have cut out this section here to use on another layout. I haven't used all of the pattern paper that this layout has, so I'm able to use that on another page as well. So I am going to be extending this workshop kit quite a bit, I think. So stay tuned. I will probably have more videos coming up very, very soon showing what else I'm going to do with this gorgeous collection and this fabulous scrapbooking workshop kit. As always, happy crafting. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.